UW360 is proudly supported by Pacific Office Automation, Copy, Print, Workflow, and IT, Problem Solved. But the planters and the bosses throw the people out of their shacks. There is a mean things happening in this land. He may sound more like a folk singer than a university professor, but Michael Honey is actually the Fred and Dorothy Haley Professor of Humanities at the University of Washington's Tacoma campus. His latest book melds his wealth of knowledge of labor and civil liberties history with his love of music. The book is called Sharecropper's Troubadour, John L. Hancock's The Southern Tenant Farmers Union and the African American Song Tradition. So hungry, hungry are we. John Hancock's ancestors included a former slave and a slave owner. He grew up in Arkansas in the early 1900s and his father was a poor sharecropper. Hancock's knew how to read and write and he put his observations about social injustices into verse. The planter lives off the sweat of the sharecropper brow. Just how the sharecropper lives, the planter cannot house. And he was saying to people, I'm trying to show you what things are like, why they're wrong, and why you have to do something about it. No more morning. No. Hancock's joined the Southern Tenant Farmers Union in the 1930s. Honey says Hancock's words helped unite farm workers, both blacks and whites. The songs motivated them to seek change without arousing suspicion that speeches would. If the police heard that or anybody from the white community except people in the union, uh, you'd be beaten up, arrested, killed, something bad. But if you sang the song, they may not realize <laughs> the power of what you were doing there. But the outspoken Hancocks eventually did attract the attention of a lynch mob, and he was forced to flee. He settled in San Diego, out of the public eye, for 40 years. Everybody thought he was dead because he had sort of disappeared. And the reason he disappeared was that a lynch mob came to kill him in Arkansas, and so he fled, and a lot of other people fled as well. Hancocks resurfaced in the 1980s when Pete Seeger learned that he was still alive. That's when Honey met Hancocks at a conference on labor and civil rights songs. And John got this overwhelming reception because, you know, most people don't know who he is. Uh, Pete Seeger said he's one of the most important folk musicians of the 20th century and the least known of all of them. Most of his songs actually have themes that uh, are still very much with us. That's where Honey first put Hancock's poetry to music. Hancock's died in 1992 at the age of 88. He spent his later years performing at labor rallies, eager to share his music. Cause the union's going on. Now Michael Honey is doing the same. I say that if this history happened and we don't know that it happened, then what good did it do? In this land, 